On multiple occasions, George Lucas has said when asked about the saga he shaped that the story of Star Wars is about family and the fight between good and evil. In 1983, the final film of the original trilogy, Return of the Jedi, was released and after the ending of Empire Strikes Back, fans finally got to see the heroes win, although maybe not in the way you'd expect. As we all know, the headstrong, laser sword, swashbuckling farm boy faced the ultimate evil and chose the power of family over the power of the dark side. Today I am joined by one half of Beyond the Dune Sea and my friend, Connor. Connor, happy to have you on, dude. I'm very happy to be here, Will. Thank you so much for having me. We're going to be talking about Return of the Jedi, um, and we're going to be talking about one of my personal favorite scenes when you brought this up. There it is. Return of the Jedi, baby. Let's go. Talking about one of my personal favorite scenes, do you want to let the people in on which scene we will be watching? Yes. So my favorite scene in all of Star Wars is absolutely at the end of Return of the Jedi when Luke Skywalker vanquishes his father as he's laying there with his broken mechanical hand and then Luke stares at his own mechanical hand and realizes that, no, I don't want to fight him. I don't hate my father and I am a Jedi like my father before me. And he throws that lightsaber to the side. That whole block right there, his conversation with Palpatine, that act of defiance and that act of love is, I think, what defines Star Wars. It's what defines Luke Skywalker as a character. And it's why I love the story. Do you remember the first time you watched that scene? No, I not necessarily. I think that the scene has become more powerful to me over time. Return of the Jedi as a whole is my third favorite Star Wars movie. Um, but that empire and revenge of the sith are kind of above it i do remember when i watched it though like even when i was a kid return of the jedi was my favorite uh of the originals because of that scene Mm -hmm. i didn't really understand the gravitas of what was happening until later until i started to go deeper into like motivations of the characters and everything um I just thought Luke was really cool and but i think that goes to show the the brilliance of lucas's storytelling is like you know intuitively even as a kid like this is I, this is great what i'm watching it's not just guys swinging light sticks at each other it is that and that's cool and that's <laughs> enticing but there is something more to it and even if as a kid you can't articulate it you know that there's something there and it's something that you can dive deeper on when you get older and you know you refine your uh your belief systems and your moral morality and all of these things and i think that that's what makes that scene so powerful but i i can't recall a specific point maybe where that scene really hit me. Uh, but it's just over time, I guess it's been a slow burn. I was actually scared of Luke at some points during this when he's standing over Vader and he's just got that look in his eyes. I remember as a kid being like, ah, I don't like this. Like, that's not why Why is Luke like this? This is he cut off his hand, guys. This is bad. The dark scene, the the red of the lightsaber, the glow in his face. His, he's got those the crazy eyes yeah. um, when he's standing over him. And I just remember being scared watching that VHS tape at my grandmother's house. My parents didn't have the tapes. Um, I would have to go to my grandmother's and go upstairs and pull out the VHS player, plug it in. You're right. Yeah. Return of the Jedi is, is my favorite of the star Wars films. It's my all time favorite, the way it starts and the way it ends. Um, and obviously I have it tattooed on my body now, but Luke Skywalker being my favorite star Wars character, um, I just think is the best beginning to end story within a story that I think is the best story of all time. Oh yeah. You cannot hide. I will not fight. Give yourself to the dark side. So, okay, I mean, right away, we gotta we gotta hit that one. Yep. The I will not fight you. I first of all, just with this scene, there is something about, especially in the original trilogy, these sets. Yeah. Uh and they used the entire thing. And I love that about this fight in particular. This is Depending on the day, it's my favorite lightsaber battle. Um, It's neck and neck with Anakin Obi-Wan. The fact that they're just, they're using the entire thing. Like when they walk into that room earlier in the movie, you get an establishing shot of the entire throne room. And now 
so in your mind, you already know what it looks like. And now they're just everywhere, right? Now they're in the bowels of it. They're, they're in deep, you know, the visual storytelling of they're in the darkness, you know, they're, and you cannot hide forever, Luke. I will not fight you. Um, like Luke is already wrestling with his, uh, with his, his will they won't they with the dark side. Cause Yoda and empire strikes back, you know, your weapons, you do not need them. And he ignores that. Uh, now in this movie, there's, he's wearing black. He's forced choking Gamorrean guards in the beginning of the movie, you know, and now we're here and he's really struggling. He's in the dark with Vader. And obviously it's also cool that he's, uh, this is referenced in Ahsoka later. I like that as well. You brought up Luke going through that turmoil, uh, a scene that I did want to ask you about, or a piece of this fight that I did want to ask you about when Luke ignites his lightsaber and strikes down at Palpatine <laughs> and Vader blocks it. There's a lot of people online when that scene is discussed saying, is Vader blocking him to protect the emperor or is it the emperor saying, if you strike me down, I will become more powerful. Kind of that Ben Kenobi thing. Is it Vader blocking Luke so that the emperor does not become that powerful being? I think that there's a third option, which is like, does he do it to save Luke's soul? Vader at this point in the story, he's even more broken than ever. Right. So you asked me if I remembered a moment, if I remembered seeing this moment at any, when I was a kid, not that moment, but I do remember a moment from this movie that has always stuck out to me. Even when I was a kid, it's when Vader turns his back on Luke on the bridge and indoor and Obi-Wan once thought as you do. I remember yep. seeing that and thinking, where was the guy from the first two movies, the powerhouse? Yeah. Like this is not that, that guy anymore. He is broken by the revelation that he has a son. And I think he he feels an obligation to need to bring him to the emperor. And maybe the only way he sees out of it is to strike him down. And maybe in Vader's mind, he's like, I, I want to save my son's soul. And maybe together we can defeat the emperor later. Or maybe it's just muscle memory at this point. I mean, the guy's been just trained to be a subservient to Palpatine. And at this yeah. point, he could just, oh, I got to protect my guy. <laughs> There will be a few points where, and you'll like this, where I uh, bring this bad boy up. Um, this is the original printing of this from the novelization of Return of the Jedi. I, I like to go through this as well in kind of, not necessarily in junction with, but more in comparison to what's going on in scenes like this. Um, but at that point when Vader blocks luke's saber it's referred to as if luke was to kill the emperor at that point vader would not be able to turn luke that if it was without the emperor's guide he would not be able to turn luke and have luke join him to rule the galaxy which i always thought was interesting where rather than it being uh vader's defense or uh it being a reflex or even that thing of which I would like to assume that it's Vader blocking Luke's saber saying, no, we can't, he can't die yet because I want to save your soul. Like you were saying um, that it's more, no, I can't, he can't turn yet because if he does, he will still have time to return to his friends. No, that's interesting because I, I actually like that the best. I think because Vader's not to the point yet where he believes that there's any other path for him. Correct. Other than bringing like he wants to bring his son with him because he loves his son, but he also still has to be the evil ruler because yeah. there's no other way for him. So I think later he realizes that that's the Sith in him talking. Like he has to maintain his yeah. mortal coil and stay on, on the galactic plane. But later is when he resolves himself to say, you know what? No, that's none of that's important. My son is the only thing that's important. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, at this, at that point in the fight though, that does make sense. He's trying to save Luke, but also, ah, well, if he if he strikes down Palpatine, then I lose my grasp on him, and it's Padme all over again. And uh, at least from the novel's perspective, um, it's more intrinsic rather than a selfless thing, which we see Vader tap into yeah. later on in in his return to Anakin. Your thoughts betray you. Your feelings for them are strong, especially for. Sister Obi Wan was wise to hide her from me. Now his failure is complete. 
If you will not turn to the dark side, perhaps she will. And right there, I mean, you gotta, gotta, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a lot going on right there. Correct. Vader, I like that he's, he's being a little, he's being a little jerk. You know? Yeah, he's, being, he's a, like, he's prying, he's prying at him, trying to, this is, this is one of those times where I feel Vader is at his most evil. Because a lot of times when he's depicted as evil, it's just silently slashing through uh, Mm -hmm. the rebellion, not even in the Empire Strikes Back when it's Luke versus Vader. He's he's trying to have a conversation with him the entire time while he's fighting him. This is he's really trying to provoke Luke and get him to, well, if if you won't join me, maybe I can do it another way and force you to hate me enough that you have to join me because you will tap into yes. that dark side. It's his mention of Obi-Wan too that has always stuck out to me. Yeah. Because he, he mentions him several times in this movie. And Obi-Wan's yes. not really in this movie a whole lot. The I, I think by this point George had kind of written a broad outline for the prequels. And so you you can see a lot of him sowing those seeds. And Vader gets really upset mentioning that. Oh, his failure is now complete mentioning Leia. Like, ah, I finally got another one up on him. And, oh, all these years later, I killed Obi-Wan. I've now, I'm turning Luke and I can turn her too. And it's all just to, to twist the knife. Cause I mean, Obi-Wan is Vader's biggest weakness and always has been. Uh, but you get mo- like m- moments across this movie of like all sides of his emotion, like from the bridge on Endor, Obi-Wan once thought as you do. It's very sad. It's resolved. And then in earlier in this fight, Obi-Wan has taught you well. Even though it's Yoda who taught him in lightsaber combat, that scene was deleted from The Empire Strikes Back, but yeah. it was Yoda who did that, but he just assumes it was Obi-Wan. And now he just, he's like, again, twisting the knife into his old master. And I think that that's what kind of wells the dark side up in Vader, you know, like yeah. really trying to get in Luke's mind. Then it works. Luke never. Oh, by the way, does he say never or no? Because Seth and I argue about this sometimes. Let's rewind a little bit. Perhaps she will. I think he says never. He says nar. Um, I've always, <laughs> I've always thought it was never as well. Um, I, I've always thought it was never. However, it would be nice if it was. If it was no, it mirrors Vader's realization of losing Padme. So Luke's realization that he might lose Leia in the same way that Vader yeah. lost Padme. I would really like it to be no in that way. It's interesting. Just because of, of that realization of giving into what you are and that dark side of yourself of no. And it's almost different too, where the separation between Vader and He's he's dealing with what he's done at that point when he gets up from the table and the no, and he does yeah. the, the scream as he breaks off the table in Revenge of the Sith. But here, Luke hasn't lost Leia yet. Well, he's he did give away the secret, though. Exactly. He, his thoughts betrayed him. Yeah. And I think that he's that's yes, it's the fear of losing Leia, but it's also I'm I'm losing again. Like, yes. I'm still losing. And I keep losing to like, he, he cannot confront Vader in the right way. And it's just, yeah. it's like, no matter what he does, he does the wrong thing where he's like, okay, I'm, I'm doing what Yoda taught me. I'm, I will not fight you father. Yes. He's hanging back, but Vader still is able to, he's able to win this part of the battle. And Luke's like, I, I don't know what to do. I, so he pulls his lightsaber out again. And he's like, I, this is all I know. I, <laughs> I, there's no other way to beat you. Something I've always loved is thinking of Luke's perspective in these moments, knowing what Yoda and Obi-Wan told him about the, the failure that he will have when he gets to cloud city. And that just echoing in his mind, every time he meets Vader, he loses on cloud city here. He is worried. He is going to lose just that echoing of the kind of Yoda and Obi-Wan. I told you so moment going yeah. on in the back of Luke's head. I've always loved that in these moments to think about. It's great because it's like, Ultimately, Yoda was only half right, and that's what Luke has to f- find out later. Yeah, because when when Luke meets Yoda, when Yoda dies, uh, he he asks him, "Was is Darth Vader my father?" And Yoda told you he did. Unexpected. This is. Yep. 
Like they didn't want to do that. They wanted to breed him like a pig for slaughter, as Dumbledore would say. He was right in the sense like you don't you don't need to bring your weapons. The force is all you need. But also you do need to rely on your attachment to your father. And so it's that's where ultimately why Luke is the best character. He's also my favorite character in Star Wars. So it's yeah. Let's continue. Not to quickly pause here, but the lightsaber choreography of him just slicing and dicing like a baseball bat. Yeah, it's great. And, and while you're paused, I didn't want to pause it, but since you did, Jedi's Fury is probably, Ooh. it's a top three, maybe a top one John Williams score for me. There are so many layers to why we love Star Wars, and the music will always boil down to be the one thing that I think everyone can absolutely agree on. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's the triangle of why Star Wars works. It's George Lucas, Ralph McQuarrie, John Williams. Okay, pause right here. This is one of my only criticisms of this fight. Is it is it how he leans onto the bar? Yes. Yeah. It's like so obvious that like he leaned there first. It looks like more of a choice of a choice of defeat rather than him being forcefully pushed into that guardrail. Yeah, I mean that's maybe an in-universe way to explain it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that it's just the choreography wasn't as smooth right there like that. No, 100%. There's another point where it's like right here where you can kind of see Vader misstep. Um right here where he just kind of do you see that where oh, he kind of okay. takes a step back and grabs the guardrail that's the only other thing that i've like okay it makes sense where he's already needed the guardrail once to hold himself up so he moves to the other one but when it okay. gets when it gets to this this right side it's it's almost a choice like yeah it's like he's grabbing onto it to hold himself up and it looks very forced in terms of the choreography but that yeah. first misstep is the only thing that's ever been what's kind of made it work in my head that's cool that's a neat detail i didn't notice there are very few things that take me out of it in terms of the experience of watching this and being immersed in the world but that kind of whoop like okay yeah. this like the guy who's in the suit being like okay this is where i need to grab the guard right exactly uh, you could you could see that yeah <laughs> This is kind of the big moment right here. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. The, we're getting into the into the meat here. This is it. We've been we've had we've had our appetizers and we've been having a good time, you know, with everything yep. up to this point. But it's like as soon as he cuts the hand off, um Invader with the ah, you know, and he fa falls back. Yep. Um it's interesting that Luke does defeat him. Um, yes. first of all, with everything we know about Vader, because Vader has become such a household name. I mean, that's not that's even understating what Vader is in pop culture. Like he is if you were to show Vader's face to anybody at any age, it's exactly. it's like a ninety nine percent chance that they're gonna go Vader or Star right. Wars. And I think that what's happened with him is like he's become this force of nature, even in 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 the story, they've even adopted that. And that's great yeah. in some instances, but also you lose a little bit of this like he is vulnerable. He is able to be to be bested. Yes. Um that's why I think people were maybe with the Obi Wan show, <laughs> you know, he got bested there. People were like, Well, how could that happen? It's like, well, I mean, it's not the first time. He's been beat a few times. Yes. Uh but then the great moment here is the where you paused. I mean, in Luke's face where you just see his eyes, you know, flare up for a moment. There's nothing but death in this guy's eyes of he's got yeah. one job and it's murder. Yes. And man, Mark Hamill is. He, he could be added to that triangle, I think. I um, love that. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. The entire original cast is fantastic. of Star yeah. Wars. There's no doubt about it. But Mark had a just a level of believability in his face. Like there's so much absurdity going on around you. Yep. Um, like he's talking to a little green frog. He's flying out in space. 
doing all these crazy things. Like there's a lot that you just have to, even as an actor, right? Like there's a lot of suspension of disbelief. Forget the audience, like the actors themselves have to figure this out. And I mean, Star Wars is one of the first movies of its kind to do stuff like this. And in this moment, you get that again, where Luke's just, or Mark, excuse me, Mark's commitment to the believability of the character. Yeah. Is so great. And also, I love that he was, he, he's mentioned it many times, he had a fear of being typecasted as the as the bastion of good you know because yep. luke skywalker but he's also his role his other major role is the joker and the best it's be- he's the best one and it's because like moments like this show that that's why he's good at it is because he has both sides of that in him and that makes him such a good luke skywalker is it, yes the best part exactly. of luke is having that that spinning of both sides of the good and the bad that's in you if I can for just a moment to read this piece from the novelization, because I love the way it explains what Luke is going through because in this part of the novelization, it's, it just kind of, it it quickly goes over what we watched in terms of the baseball bat swinging um, the choreography there. Uh, I also thought it was interesting to point out, when they're doing the choreography there, just how much Luke hits absolutely everything else other than Vader's saber while that's going on. The amount of sparks from everything. And yes, the bridge is very low and they're underneath all of that and the the platform that they're below, but he hits just about everything else as well as Vader. So him just going straight for him, he doesn't care what's in his way. He does not care what is destroyed outside of Vader just as long as he's part of the uh the buck shot if you want to refer to it as that of him swinging that baseball bat lightsaber and then okay luke stared at his father's twitching severed mechanical hand and then at his own blacked glove artificial part and realized suddenly just how much he had become like his father like the man he hated trembling he stood above vader the point of his glowing blade at the Dark Lord's throat. He wanted to destroy this thing of darkness, this thing that was once his father, this thing that was him. I really like that just because that's kind of one of my favorite ways it's described of Luke looking at Vader as what he is to become. Going back to, I mean, there's so many times that you can talk about this fight and talk about what happens in Empire Strikes Back. The foretelling of when he's in the the Jedi trials on in the tree on Dagobah and the the helmet explodes and it shows his face under Vader's mask and he, he it's confusing and he doesn't understand uh, this is that point realized where he finally looks down at Vader he looks down at his hand he looks down at Vader's hand and he without actually seeing it in his head he sees himself within Vader just like that vision and i love that being realized in this moment. See, I've looked at this as like, I think his moment of realization from the moment in the cave is empire. And then this, so the through line for me in a new hope you have, I want to go with you and learn the ways of the force to become a Jedi like my father. And then an empire strikes back. No, I am your father. That moment of no, that's not true is I've been, this is my destiny. I've been training to become a Jedi like my father. You are the Jedi because you are my father. And that's what I've been doing. That's, this is what I'm destined to become. That's what the cave meant. And I think this moment here in Return of the Jedi is him staring at Vader's hand and his hand saying, I failed. Because I think in Luke's mind right here, yeah, he he hates this thing. He hates this, this, this emblem, emblem of darkness that's torturing his friends and making him go down this path. And he wants to save him, but he also, you know, if he has to get rid of him, then he has to get rid of him. And I think in his mind, he's like, well, I can kill you, then go after the emperor. At least if I kill you, then maybe my, I can distract the emperor and let my friends get away. But it's a false choice. He can't, he cannot succeed down that path. And I think he realizes that as we will see in the next few minutes. Something that I think is is great in terms of the costuming here is how reflective Vader is in this moment. 
like everything that's happening around him is shown on his armor and you know it's it's not really shown here you can't really see mark hamill in vader's mask but you know that when you are looking at vader's reflective that metal suit that he is looking into you know that at some points he's seeing his own reflection in that mask and in that suit which is going back to the what he saw on dagobah of him realizing that the man in that mask and the man he is is just the smallest step from one another rather than it being an entire range it's just a switch that can be flipped the flap you know i mean exactly we'll see in a second <laughs> and take your father's place at my side Before we get to the the big part here, I'll pause it there just so I get all my thoughts out before this big part. Your hate has made you powerful. Once again, we see the Emperor's hubris. It's that line that starts Luke to think, because it's right. I mean, we just read it from the novelization, but like the it was Luke's hate that made him powerful. And he stares at his hand, you know, and the thing I love the most about that is when Luke just. Yep. He just, it's he just that takes breath a breath. He takes. He's overcome by that feeling. And he realizes that, no, there's there's one more choice I can make. Yep. I don't need to thrust this sword into my father and take his place by the emperor's side. I don't need to turn around and strike the emperor. I don't need to do any of that. There is one more choice here. And I think talking back to the cave, I mean, this is almost exactly what you see, like as far as the shots go, like Luke is holding his lightsaber. It's the yeah. close up, the upward close up, and then the downward close up of the mask breaking up and Yoda telling him, your weapons, you do not need them. And something I love here, too, is obviously that breath that he takes. It's almost like Palpatine is letting him kind of he he's letting him fester he thinks that this is when he is going to drop into that dark side he's he's actually go he's already defeated he's taken down his uh his father he's going to take that place he's just seconds away from saying from taking that knee and and taking his father's place but that exhale and that what looks to be an overcoming of the force is actually or the dark side of the force is actually a release of all of that that he just went through and a decision to let go which we see physically in the letting go of the saber when he actually throws it so you see twice the okay i'm going to let go here and then he actually lets go of the physical embodiment of that weapon especially from palpatine's perspective of yes you can see it overcoming him he's physically being overcome with that dark side but instead it's the exact opposite for him and that kind of goes into palpatine's hubris and his it's his own arrogance here where palpatine is so certain that luke is going to make the decision that he wants him to make and as we see once i hit play here in a little bit it's the exact opposite of what he wants and that just the switch flips never i'll never turn to the dark side You failed, Your Highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. And right there. Dude, that that's that's Star Wars right there. That's it. That's that's that quote. Story wise, it's my favorite quote, even though probably my actual favorite quote is uh, the force is with you, young Skywalker, but you are not a Jedi yet. Ooh, I like that one too. This just encapsulates everything about what the story is, because like when A New Hope came out, if I can here, because this is like the meat of what I really enjoy about this is this line. Yeah, so, let's do but, it. Uh, so when A New Hope came out, it was your basic fantasy hero's journey. There was really nothing spectacular about it outside of visually it was stunning. It had excellent world building. The music was spectacular. But story-wise, the farm boy gets recruited by the old wizard. It's given Excalibur. They go to the Dark Tower to save the princess and beat the Dark Wizard. Yep. You know, I mean, it's... It's as by the numbers as you can get. Um, <laughs> but then Empire comes out. 
and changes everything. Yep. He doesn't get stripped of Excalibur. He doesn't get stripped of, I mean, he does in the end of the movie, but he doesn't at the beginning. <laughs> he he is stripped, stripped of one of his limbs at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't go through a character arc that's uh, completely antithetical to the one that he went in the previous movie. Everything about Luke that made him strong makes him fail in Empire yep. Strikes Back. Saving the day, getting the girl, even though by this point there'd be no option for that. <laughs> I mean, Mon Mothma's around. I don't know if she's single, but maybe uh, Luke can hit her up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's not the story here. That's not the climax. The climax of the story is shh, never. Yep. I'll never turn to the dark side. You're just talking about reflections and seeing himself in Vader, and he still does. He's not taking that away. He's not. He's just decided instead of hating this man that I know that I am and I know that I will become, I choose instead to become the best of this man and the best parts about him because I know that that is who he can be and who he was. And if that is, if my doom is to become this man, then I will become a Jedi like my father. He's mocked by Han Solo like a Jedi Knight, huh? you know, and uh, Yoda kind of laughs at that too. And the, the, uh, he says, you will only be a Jedi if he confronts Vader. And for the first time, it's the emperor. It's the devil who tells him, so be it. Yep. Jedi. You want this so bad, you can have it. There's a few things in that line that I love. The To go off of your highness, there's, there's kind of two pieces that I like with that. It's snarky. It's kind of to get under his skin of, oh, your highness, like, oh, you're so big and powerful. But there's also a little bit of respect under referring to somebody as your highness. Mm -hmm. He could have called him the emperor, which isn't as uh, foreboding as calling somebody your highness. There's almost there's there's that respect. There's that royal elegance that he brings up there of, hey, you are you are in charge of all of this and I will refer to you as your highness, but that does not mean I will give in to your wants here. Um, that's something I love. And the there's a point where when he says, like my father before me, he kind of does this snarky head yeah. nod too, which yeah. I've always really enjoyed. Um, almost like a, yeah, that guy, that guy's my dad. And that kind of pulls into the eighties of all of it, which I really enjoy. And that's just the greatness of Mark Hamill. But what you were saying in terms of the, the differences here and, and his choice, which is really what all of star Wars boils down to is that choice of to be better or to fall into your follies and your wants and your desires. Um, I mean, George Lucas has said it a million times that, uh, the more the more that you give into yourself, the greedier you get, and that's the path mm -hmm. to the dark side. Um, here, Luke's choice as to not be that. It's often when Vader is looked at. There's there's always this thing, especially especially with Star Wars fans. Is Vader and Anakin separate people? Are they the same thing? And when you refer to Vader, are you also referring to Anakin? Or are you referring to Anakin when you are referring to Vader? Kind of that split personality sort of deal, which is the greatness of the Dar the character of Darth Vader. Uh, when he says, I am a Jedi like my father before me, you can guess that what you were talking about earlier of choosing to be the father choosing to be like his father and what he is destined to be. If this is my destiny, I will be the Jedi. I used to think of it as I choose Anakin over Vader, but the more that I think about it, the more that I think Luke is choosing all of Vader, all of Anakin in his entirety of, I will be like my father. I am his goodness. I am his, his bad and I choose to be all of it. And with that, I choose to be the best version of myself rather exactly. than be, yeah. I choose either Anakin or choose Vader. He chooses the entirety because all of it is his father in that realization. I accept this man for all of his faults, everything that he is good and bad. And I choose to be everything he is, especially the good. Yep. Uh, but I won't fall into the bad. And I think it's, I think that sort of acceptance is, 
is great. It's a, it's a lesson you see it time and time again in Star Wars. Uh, you see it a little bit more on the nose in uh, Clone Wars season six when Yoda goes to fight the shadow version of himself. Yeah. And he learns that the folly of himself and of the Jedi is that they reject darkness completely rather than accepting that it's part of you and that you just need to curb it at at those moments rather than ignoring it completely rather than solely focusing on the bad or 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 the light and i think that sort of dogmatic view is what got vader in his position he's in in the first place yeah i i do love too how luke chooses the good in so many times beforehand almost like he's proving it to himself is what it feels like to me beforehand of like no there is good in you father he says it to leia on endor he says it on the bridge when luke is first captured he also says it when luke has the high ground in the scenes just prior to this uh when he's yep. standing above vader is there still that good in you and just to tie it back to the novelization one more time what I love in that moment is here, Vader. I would love to get your thoughts on when Vader um, has the realization of I'm going to save my son. If it's here when he's he's got his hand and he's like, oh, this is the only thing I can do, because there is a point where he crawls back to Palpatine's side and the other moment where. Uh, and we'll watch it here in a little bit. The other moment that kind of takes me out of this scene, like the like the guardrail hold is when vader is just kind of turning back and forth where you see him trying to decide of him looking back and forth between luke and palpatine while he is being electrocuted you don't like that i love that i love it but it's always been kind of a funny thing of like a huh huh like him him <laughs> physically weighing the options in his head in this big dark leather plastic heavy suit that he has become of like luke or palpatine where he kind of moves back and forth. it's just always <laughs> been a funny motion to me um but what i love is earlier in that scene when luke says um there is still that i feel the good in you the novelization refers to vader's reaction to that statement from luke as an accusation which i've always loved where an huh. accusation is always kind of like blaming somebody for something but referring to oh there's still good in you finding that goodness in somebody and that being referred to as an accusation i've always i've always enjoyed that's something that uh, that's when, very fascinating yeah when rereading the novel i was like wow that's crazy that that's how much hatred he was giving into at that moment that even the slightest knowledge of hey there's still good in you is is evil it, it, he wants to spit that out that he's ever yeah. And he even hears that. Huh. It's a good thought. So be it, Jedi. If you will not be turned, you will be destroyed. <laughs> I, I do find the father please interesting. Uh, Seth always makes fun of that line. So it's, I'm trying not to laugh just thinking about it. But uh, uh, I, I think that that's powerful because Luke has kind of resolved to, I'm going to accept whatever happens to me. But he still does call out to his father one more time to help him. Like, And I don't know, I find that very fascinating because he's not, even though he's just thrown away his saber and he's not going to fight, he's still not, he doesn't want to die. You know, it's, he doesn't, he doesn't want to just give up. Um, and so he turns to the only person in the room that cares about him. And I think that that's, it's a very powerful sort of, uh, plea to just begging for help for, from his, from his dad to, because he's like, I know, I know you care about me. A lot of times when you look at, luke's choice to throw away his saber as much as that is he's he's choosing not to physically fight there that doesn't mean that he's not going to fight in this moment him choosing to yeah. throw his saber away is a choice to fight back just not in the way that the yeah. emperor and vader want him to um so that plea there i've always thought too and i wanted to ask your opinion on it 
Um, in that moment, do you think that Luke is calling out to Vader to help him or his father to help him because it's like a save me father, like for lack of a better term, damsel in distress sort of deal of please, please help me. And he's, it's a begging plea or if it's Luke taking this um, kind of like we talked about Plagueis too, of him taking in that electricity of I'm giving you this opportunity to choose the good father. I see it in you. And if it takes me being electrocuted in this moment, no matter how long it takes, I'm giving you, if there's ever going to be a choice or time for you to decide to turn back and become my father, it's now. So do you think that Luke has that in his head? I don't know. That's a good question because I think that there is something very primal about his plea. It's a very almost infantile thing. Yeah. Like, dad, help me. Yeah. Please. Like <laughs> you're the, uh, he just, he just wants his dad to help him, you know, and he's, it's the only thing he can think to do. So I think that, that that's, and there is a lot of power in that. There's a lot of power in that statement because yeah. a, a very similar sort of primal reaction faces Vader here in just a moment. Yeah, it's very it's very sad in that way. It's like, man, that's all he wants. He just wants his dad to help him. Yeah, and that's kind of the something too where there's that beat when Luke says, I am a Jedi like my father before me, and he takes that breath, and then it cuts back to Palpatine, and he's just kind of looking at him, and you can see it festering in him of that, of, oh, I thought I won too. Well, I guess that's over, and it just being rage at that point. Yeah, it, exactly. It brings to the electricity uh, that he shoots from his own hands, but it's kind of like Luke is, he's like, well, this is the choice I've made. Let's see how it goes. And that's the only thing that's kind of brought me to Luke choosing almost as an example of, hey, I'm calling out to you right now, father. You you need to answer this call or I will die. Well, you know what's fascinating, too, is that Luke always, since finding out, has referred to Vader only as his father. Yes. And it's like what a conviction that Luke has for that. Yeah. Like even in this moment, even if it is a sort of primal, like dad, please, they, he doesn't know him very well. You know, I mean, that's a, that's something that is very interesting about Luke because there's a certain trust there and there's a, you could, there's a longing for that relationship too, which is incredibly fascinating. And you can really psychoanalyze that one too. And it's just, it's so, yeah, and it, it makes it, I don't know. It just makes it, it makes it that much more powerful. I think. I mean, from the moment that Luke finds out that Vader is his father, he only refers to him as that. Yes, there's there's so many points, and even Ahsoka says it in Book of Boba Fett. It's so much like your father, but every yeah. time where he refers to his father as the good in him, it's so much like his mother in Revenge of the Sith, where even though she sees the turn and him falling into Vader that entire time of there's this darkness growing in him, even to her final breath, there's still good in him when she names Luke yeah. and Leia and revenge of the Sith, where I think a lot of this, I mean the entire film and we've talked about it a million times of him looking into Vader's mask and him seeing himself in Vader. But there are so many points where he is like his mother when he sees the good in his father that I truly love too. But I think that is just because while Luke may see his father in Vader, Vader sees his mother in Luke. I love that. And, and that is that is the powerful part of all of this. Yeah. And I think that that is the ultimate triumph of the prequel trilogy is that it makes this moment so much more powerful in that regard. Prior to the prequels, you have to believe in order for this scene to work that Vader turns out of a sense of primal paternal love for his son, which works. I mean, it builds to that. But how much more powerful is it that now with the prequel trilogy, you know that it goes beyond that. It's that Vader's love and familial love was his downfall. It is his primary strength and weakness. And it was the love for Padme that ultimately ends up saving the galaxy in the end. And that's so. Yeah, it's it's great. It's very hard not to meme and say uh, it's like poetry. It rhymes. But the dialogue between the end of revenge of the Sith between Padme and Anakin is yeah. so, I mean, it's almost verbatim at times between Vader and Luke throughout this entire end of the film. And that's why yeah. those are my two favorite star Wars films or revenge of the Sith, the return of the Jedi, mainly because of the connections between here. I mean, we talked about it earlier when Luke and Vader are on the bridge of 
Luke's plea to come with me, Father. We can get away from all of this. We can we can do this together. And it's the same thing as Padme and Anakin. Come away with me. We don't have to do this before Anakin's turn. And that's my favorite thing in Revenge of the Sith and this film as well is mm-hmm. Padme is calling out to Vader calling out to Anakin before his turn and then you see on that bridge what does what does Vader physically do when Luke is trying to get him to join him and, and to turn away from all of this Vader physically turns his back on him in the same yeah, way that Anakin does down. and puts his hand down and it's it's the the similarities and the mirroring of both of those two scenes are my favorite thing and I think that's what makes why, like you said, Revenge of the Sith makes Return of the Jedi so much better is Vader, I would like to think, when he has that moment when he's watching Palpatine doing this, and I'm sure somebody has made this edit of that that instance of everything flashing into Vader's head yeah. of, will I make this choice again? Because when I mean, Vader it's the, gets it's up... It's the same moment from Mace Windu. Yeah. Yep. Right. Almost shot for shot. It's the same moment. Yep. Anakin, please! And, then, and he's like, no, this time I'm making the right choice. I need him. But now it's it's him realizing that he doesn't need Palpatine. He needs Luke. Um, that it's it's I this is this is why this is my favorite movie. It's because everything in Star Wars culminates in these small yes, moments this moment. and how heavy all of this is that I could watch this any day of the week a million times a day and it's still yeah. you still find <laughs> something as fantastic as all of these moments we already know about one thing that i always like to point out is one of the first times you see vader if not the first time you see Vader in the original trilogy in A New Hope, he is picking up. He can always use the Force to do anything that he wants to, but he physically lifts that guy up and chokes him when he's interrogating him on the Tantive. And here, in his final moment, he picks Palpatine up physically rather than using the Force to throw him. So it's like, the I've always loved that him lifting somebody up to here lifting somebody up. It's a small thing, but it's tying in the original trilogy. Interesting. That first hmm. bookend to this last bookend of I'm choosing to go after the Death Star plans. Here's him picking this guy up by the throat when he could use the force too, but he's just yeah. just to manhandle him and hear the 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 decision of I need to do something rather than going to the force. He physically picks up Palpatine and throws him. I, I've always really liked that. That's cool. That's a good thought. I wonder if. I mean, Palpatine could like block him with the force. It's like one of those things where it's like, it's so obvious. Like, like you are a weak man, like yeah. physically, I could just pick you up and throw you. Exactly. The, the quote of, I am a Jedi, like my father before me is, is the beginning of this, but this is like the, the moment where it all resolves. And I mean, from, uh, you will die. to just Palpatine's like face when he's striking him again. And then Luke screaming in pain, and you get those pull-in shots of a uh, of Vader, you know, just contemplating that decision. Like, no, I'm going to make the right choice this time. Yeah. And then you get the the musical score swelling for the first time when Vader does something significant. You don't get the Imperial March, except for in A New Hope. I know we didn't have the Imperial March then, but we don't get some sort of uh, sinister sound sounding track. We get the Force theme. Because Vader realizes if Luke beca- if Luke can become a Jedi like his father, then his father can become a Jedi like his son. And he lifts him and throws him down into that reactor shaft. And it's like, man, what a powerful, powerful, powerful scene. I like that John Williams, he doesn't even do this trick that he does sometimes where he'll take a sinister theme and kind of make it sound more hopeful. He does it later with uh, when Vader dies and he plays the Imperial March in that sort of somber, but also it's kind of hopeful way. He does it with Kylo Ren. When Kylo Ren comes on um, into Exegol, you hear Kylo Ren's theme, but it's done. And I think a major key, I'm not a music guy, so I I don't know if that's entirely correct, but I think that it makes it sound more hopeful. So he does this a few times, but in this moment, you don't get the Imperial March done in this like 
hopeful, triumphant way, you get the Force theme. Yeah. Because Vader has at last the return of the Jedi. Because that's what that movie's about. That's Correct. what the title is. It's not about Luke, because Luke didn't return from anything. Nope. The Jedi weren't gone. It's Vader. Vader is the return of the Jedi, and he tosses him down. And on the flip side of that with Palpatine, I know we were just talking about our discussions from Tales from the Archives. I've said this many times, but what I love about this moment from Palpatine is that, like Sauron in The Lord of the Rings, he cannot perceive somebody doing the good thing. Like if, if Vader would have like called his lightsaber with the force and tried to cut him down or maybe tried to force choke him or something like that, striking him down out of hate, Palpatine would have immediately sensed it, countered it, and that would have been the end of it. Um, but Vader doesn't do that. He acts out of love for his son, which is something that Palpatine never anticipated, never even considered because it's he is so evil. It's, it, it goes beyond arrogance. I, it's not even so much that. It's, it's that. it's not within Palpatine's capacity as a character to understand something like love for your son. And he could not understand that Vader would do something so outlandish as pick him up and throw him down the reactor shaft for the sole purpose of saving his son because he loves him. And I think that that, is the most powerful part of all of this is that that's what triumphs over evil is absolute love. Love triumphs over evil. It's not that good triumphs over evil. It's love triumphs over evil because Palpatine thwarts the light side many times. Uh, and, but, but it's, he cannot perceive something like this. And that, that is what's so, so brilliant. So powerful. When I asked, what your favorite scene was the scene you wanted to go over. There was no hesitation in choosing this one. Um, any final thoughts that you want to say? Like, no, I think that this is, I think this scene in the original trilogy in particular, uh, given it, it's a lot more of a, it's a quieter story. It's a, it's a, it's a smaller story in a lot of ways. Um, this is a perfect climax to that story. And I think that there, these types of stories are so important because they help inform a lot of things for you as a person, especially if you watch them when you're young. You know, at least this is in my opinion, like you see this, something like this. And the biggest takeaway is that you are never too far gone. You can always, it's never too late to make the right choice. And Vader makes the right choice. Um, Vader's done awful things, as we come to find as the story continued later on. Um, and he's done horrible things, but it was never too late for him to do the right thing. And I think that that's very applicable. You may not be Darth Vader. You know, you may not, hopefully not. You may not be as wicked as Darth Vader, but it's never too late for you to do the right thing. And I think that Star Wars is a tentpole story when it comes to that. It is our fairy tale. It is our myth. It's the stuff of legends. Um, and those stories, there's a reason why people sat around campfires and told those type of stories. There's a reason why they were so powerful. It's because you imparted certain wisdom. And especially to kids, they may not know that in the midst of seeing spaceships and light sticks and force lightning, that they're getting a, that they're getting really important life lessons here. But as you get older, at least I know for me, this scene in particular, and Vader coming back was very foundational in my own belief systems. Um, with uh, I've talked about it on my show a lot, but like with my faith in particular, this scene is like important to me because it shows you're it's never too late for you, you know, and you can always come back. And having someone like Luke be self so self sacrificial. Um, and saving his father and then his father making in the same way, safe, self-sacrificial for his son, um, despite all the wickedness that he had done. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. It's something that I very much look forward to showing my children. Uh, and it's because of the scene. It's because this is how it ends. This is how this story ends. And what a brilliant way to end the story. And uh, I think that the the way that this story ends is why it will stand the test of time and why it will sit up there as one of the greatest stories ever told. If you had, 
if you had the opportunity to speak to somebody who had never seen Star Wars, knows nothing about it, and you had to show them one scene to kind of explain what Star Wars is, is this that scene? Oh. Boy. No. Only because I would like that person to... I think if you don't watch the entire story, then this moment doesn't impart the the wisdom that it could. And so if I were, if this hypothetical person were to want, if I, if I wanted them to watch these, these movies, not just because I like them, but because I would, you know, hope to see kind of a similar reaction, I'd probably show them something like, um, something from empire, maybe something from, uh, uh, maybe the Cloud City fight. Actually, yeah, probably the Cloud City fight. Yeah. Because uh, I think that that is the iconography of, it has all the iconography as, you know, towards the end of the fight, you get good John Williams music, all that stuff. But only because hopefully that intrigues them enough to watch these stories and then they can get to this. Yeah. And feel the full weight of it. The, my follow-up question to that would be then, if that same person watched a lot of Star Wars, but maybe... It has seen Star Wars is aware of it, but where somebody like you or or myself who loves this so much and has such a passion for it that we are drawn to talk about it on the internet incessantly. Um, if that person was like, "Show me a scene why you love Star Wars," is this that scene? Yes. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, at right at the end plug your stuff tell everybody where they can find you well i am one half of beyond the dune sea we have a weekly show where we dive very deep into star wars we do a lot of goofy stuff over there too come hang out with us out beyond the dune sea as we like to say beyond the dune sea is fantastic if you're not already subscribed please do so uh if you like this conversation and you're looking for more make sure to subscribe here to diamond figs links for everything are in the description just hit that subscribe button Connor, thank you so much for being here. And uh, as always, your focus determines your reality. Thanks so much. Thanks.